Now Quadlock, in my opinion, make the best motorcycle foam mounts and they've got a whole range of products for all different types of bikes and riders. So if you're wondering which ones are right for you, well in this video we're going to go through every single motorcycle specific product and I'll tell you exactly which ones you'll need so that you can get the best possible setup for your riding. And by the way, a massive thanks to Quadlock for sponsoring this guide. If you like the look of any of the products you see in this video, there's a link down in the description along with a 10% discount code specifically for our viewers. Now at its most basic, you're going to need a phone case and then a mount to attach it to your bike. The cases are phone specific, so check out the link to the Quadlock website down in the description and you'll see a full range of cases for different makes and models. And what I will say about the cases is I think they're really nice and sleek looking, quite minimal but also super strong and robust so they're a good phone case in their own right but it's this quad lock buckle on the back that allows it to be attached to the mount. That means you can use it when you're out riding for navigation or managing phone calls and music if you're wearing a Bluetooth headset. Now if you can't find your specific phone listed, maybe it's an older model or something a bit niche, they do have a universal adapter that can adhere to the back of a regular flat or even slightly curved phone case. It uses a 3M VHB or very high bond sticky pad so you're going to get as much adhesion as possible. Possible. Now the other product I recommend to go along with the case is the rain poncho if you're going to go out and ride in the wet. You see a lot of modern smartphones like this, this is a recent iPhone, they're waterproof so it doesn't really matter in terms of damaging your phone but the beads of rain when they get on the screen and if you've got the phone unlocked to navigate, weird stuff can start to happen like it changes apps or taps on a notification without you wanting it to and so the poncho just slips over the top of the phone and it prevents that happening. I've tried this out pretty extensively and it's really good in the wet which is obviously very convenient. So next up you'll need a foam mount and for a lot of bikes like my Tiger 800 here you'll need the handlebar mount. You see on this bike you've got a bit of handlebar exposed between the two clamps and so that's the perfect place to mount your phone because it's very central in terms of your field of view but also if you wanted you could mount it off to one side either just by the clamps here or up by the controls. With the handlebar mount you've got a couple of options so firstly the regular mount which is made of of plastic or you've got the handlebar mount pro which is made of billet aluminium. Functionally they're actually pretty similar but of course the billet aluminium is a little bit more rigid and also looks and feels a touch more premium. Now both of them ship with a variety of shims so they should fit any girth of handlebar and also they come with this extension arm so if you want to reposition the phone a little bit or bring it up into your field of view then you can use this but I've kind of just got it without so that it's nice and sleek against the bars. Now if you've got another style of bike like my SV650S here you may not have that flat handlebar this has got more like a clip-on style bar but fortunately there are plenty of other mounting options. Now if you've got a hollow steering nut then you can use their fork stem mount. It just slots right into that steering nut hole and what I like about it is that it gives you a very central position again just like the handlebar mount on my bike. This one also comes in the regular plastic model or the Metal Pro and again it has a bit of an extension arm so you can play with the phone's position. Failing that you could also look at their mirror mount and that's a much smaller diameter version essentially of the handlebar mount. Specifically on their website Quadlock reference scooters because you don't have a lot of mounting options in terms of the cockpit there so the mirror mount's perfect and it gets it right up into your field of view. Lastly if none of these suit you've got the one inch ball adapter which is compatible with a ram style mount. Maybe if your bike is particularly awkward to fit the mount to then this is another option to look at but also on the website there's a bunch of spacers, extension arms like the one I showed you earlier and a knuckle joint so I believe with all those different mounting options and those adapters there should be something for every bike. Now let's move on to some of the modifiers that you can fit onto these mounts and I'll start with the vibration dampener. You see most modern smartphones use optical image stabilization on the camera and that gives you super smooth footage by mounting the sensor on some tiny springs so it removes any of the shaking when you're jerking the phone around. Problem is of course if you mount it on your bike it's going to get a lot of vibrations from the road and from the engine and that can actually lead to damaging those springs which is going to make your phone footage look super jerky and like your camera 
cameras freaking out. In fact, Apple themselves have issued a statement saying that mounting your phone onto a motorcycle could lead to damage and they take no responsibility. But fortunately, this is Quadlock's solution, the vibration dampener, and it's basically like three little rubber dampers that soak up all of those harmful vibes. So effectively, for a few quid, you could save yourself a very expensive phone repair. And so for most riders who have a fairly modern smartphone, unless you're absolutely sure that you don't need it, I'd recommend picking one up. Now with the phone case and the mount and then the vibration dampener, you're all set up for a nice long motorcycle journey using your phone to navigate. But the thing is, apps like Google Maps can be super power intensive, especially if it's a sunny day and the brightness on your phone is maxed. So you're probably going to want to figure out a way to power your phone. Some bikes do have a USB socket in the cockpit, or you might want to run a USB up to the bars from the bike's battery. But the neatest solution, providing your phone supports wireless charging, is the quad lock wireless charging head. Now it attaches to the top of any of the mounts. So in this particular instance, I've got the pro mount underneath, the vibration dampener in between, and then the wireless charging head on top. And basically it means that anytime you mount your phone on the bars, it's gonna be slowly charging up. Now, of course, if you're just doing short journeys, then you could just rely on the phone's internal battery. But if you're out all day or you fancy doing a little bit of touring, then having a way to power your phone like this is a must. Now, whether you do decide to use the wireless charging head or just run a cable, you're gonna need some way of connecting it to the battery. And I'd thoroughly recommend this. It's their 12 volt to USB smart adapter. At one end, you've got the battery connectors, at the other, a USB socket. But the smart part is the auto feed feature and this means that it won't send power to your phone until the input voltage reaches 13.5 volts which is typically achieved when the bike's engine is running and then it will cut off when the voltage goes below 12 and a half volts which normally happens after the bike's been off for a bit so essentially you could accidentally leave your phone mounted on the bike or plugged in overnight and it still wouldn't drain the bike's battery now on top of all these awesome motorcycle specific products you've now got quad locks mag cases these are compatible with their new magnetic mounts which are super quick and convenient to attach to. Thing is for motorcycling of course you want the most robust and secure mount possible and so all of the motorcycle mounts still use the main quad lock buckle but if you want to use your quad lock case with the rest of their ecosystem then I'd definitely look into this. One example would be their desktop wireless charger so you can quickly mount it with the mag and have it next to your computer while you work or you've got the mag wireless charging head which is compatible with some of their car mount so again in the car you might just want to chuck it on there as quickly and conveniently as possible so if you only ever intend to use quad lock on the bike then this might not be of interest but if you like the look of the rest of their products then this gives you the most ease of use so that concludes our guide to the entirety of the quad lock motorcycle lineup if you've got any questions leave them down in the comments below in the description you'll find the link to their website and the 10% discount code and a massive thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one